Thanks, Millie. Hello, welcome, friends, rivals. Um, we were just remembering that uh, Millie called Mari Colvin uh, a, a year and two weeks ago to ask her to come to the Frontline Club for this event. And she said, well, I will, delighted. And she said, uh, remember, what you're doing at the Frontline Club talking about Syria is almost as important as what we're doing here trying to report it, because it does slip out so easily of the headlines. So with that in mind, it's an amazing turnout from, from all of us here tonight. And thank you very much for coming. It's a public meeting, so we will be very quickly coming to you in the <coughs> audience. To make it easier, would you kindly theme your remarks? We'll come to the Syrian National Council last. We'll come to the regional players in the, in the 20 minutes before that. We'll do the West before that, but we'll start with two questions. One about the UK's new uh, sending of armoured vehicles and John Kerry. But first, could I ask the panel to introduce themselves with a brief paragraph about yourself, Julian, and uh, what you most want us to leave the room knowing you think or fear? Great. Uh, Julian barnes -Dace. I'm with the European Council on Foreign Relations, but was previously based in Damascus for three years as a journalist. Um, in terms of what I think, I, I don't think there's a military solution. I think that the price of a military solution is the destruction of Syria, and that, to be honest, talk of a... Of a I, I don't think there's been real effort into a genuine attempt at a political solution. I think there's a delusion about what we're talking about. Good evening. My name is Saha al makadi I'm a broadcast journalist. I've been covering Syria for the last decade. Started in 2002 when Syria was a very, very different country. Um, I am I'm really sick and tired of the navel-gazing over whether to arm the rebels or not, uh, and the, the fact that the focus has really been taken away from the humanitarian crisis that is befalling Syria. A million refugees today, uh, two to four million internally displaced persons, and the fact that you know, Saudi, the UAE, and Kuwait have broken their promise to fund this uh, UN appeal with $300 million each, and the fact that, you know, we're talking about, about the war rather than the humanitarian crisis. My name is Reem Turkmani. Uh, I'm astrophysicist at the Imperial College. However, since the uprising started, I <coughs> devoted my time to Syria, being very politically active. I founded a group with my colleagues in Syria, a political group called Building the Syrian State. We strongly believe in finding a political solution to the crisis. Despite everything happened, we still believe this crisis is going to be determined by a political solution. And we don't think that the international community is doing enough to support its claim that it wants a political solution. It says something and it does something else. And in that, we see most parties as guilty, like Russia is as guilty as the US, because if they all decide to agree, agree with each other and not using Syria as an arena for proxy war, then there will be a, a political solution in Syria and the bloodshed. Thank you. And can you all stop. hear at the back? <coughs> yes, fine. Yep, my name is Firas Abi Ali. I work for a uh, risk <coughs> consulting and forecasting firm called uh, Exclusive Analysis. Um, what I would say about this is that, firstly, there is no such thing as an international community. There are different states with different interests. The prospect of uh, political settlement of Syria is highly unrealistic at this stage and will continue to be so. Um, the risk of the war in Syria spreading to Lebanon mm -hmm. and Iraq is severe and only rising. And I think that this is going to be what ends up happening next uh, going forward. Thank you very much. We can all go home now, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we, we know what the panel think. And it's your turn in just a second. So with that in mind, uh, we've got just uh, four minutes left. Uh, the question was, should the international community throw its weight behind the transitional government? Would you answer that? But anything that you were most interested in or infuriated by in your closing remarks, would you like to start us off at the other end, Firas? Sure thing. Um, my point is this. You have spoilers on the Sunni side that are capable of preventing a solution, and you have spoilers on the Alawi side that are, that are capable of preventing a solution. Once you have that, you are deadlocked. And this is where that conflict is, and it's only going to spread. Rim? Yeah, I don't think they should uh, put their weight behind transitional government. I think they should think about the Syrian crisis in a uh, problem-solving mentality. They have to think that we want to resolve this. We don't want a victory. We want a solution. I can't emphasize this enough. And again, the solution is for everyone. It's not just for one party. Uh, 
I don't see this as a sectarian conflict, but it's an increasingly uh, sectarian. I think there is a war that is e exploiting the divisions in Syria, the, the Sunni Alawite issues and all the other issues, just as like the Kurdish one, for example, is being exploited for the sake of international um, conflict. Uh, was there something else you wanted no, to say? No more time. Okay. Um, <laughs> Saka al over to you. Uh, I think the, the idea of a transitional government is, is a red herring and a distraction and I think it's something that the international community wants to push because it hasn't got any better ideas. Um, I, I agree with Reem, it's, it's not a sectarian war, it's a, a civil war and it's still a revolution, we must not forget, that is being labelled as a sectarian war because that's the only terms in which the West understands the Arab world. Remember the tricolor maps of Iraq with the, the Shia at the bottom, the Sunnis in the middle and the Kurds at the top. It's, it's a similar thing in Syria except it's a bit more confusing for the West to understand. Uh, it's, it's not going to be, be solved until the international community, the supporters who are arming Syrians, sort their problems out. And I think we, you know, we have to remember our Syrian friend over here who talked about international intervention. You know, it's very easy for us to sit here in our comfy uh, chairs in London and talk about a political solution. But, you know, the Syrians on the inside are the ones who are suffering and the ones who are dying and the ones who we are pushing to continue this war while we come up with a, an idea which we still haven't come up with. I'm very pessimistic, unfortunately. I think eventually there will be a political solution, but I think it's some way off. I don't think there is a victory, unfortunately. If it was, I would support military intervention if there was a way forward, but unfortunately I don't. On another note, to end perhaps more pos positively, I mean, there's been lots of criticism here. I mean, I think it's important to remember that, you know, it's amazing what the Syrian people have done and kind of one often gets sidetracked by Jobat al-Nusra or the SNC or, I mean, essentially they've been let down by everyone. And I think, you know, it's amazing for, for those of us that know Syria pre this and what's happened now, the way that Syrians have actually come to life politically and civil society and everything. I mean, the country has transformed in a very positive way. And I think, you know, there, there, there's huge positives there. And, and unfortunately, they're being let down by everyone else. Well, thank you all very much indeed. And to you in the audience, we were listening to Julian barnes Dacey from the European Council on Foreign Relations, Saka al Makadi, uh, award-winning journalist. I'm sorry for calling you Shirak earlier. <laughs> I think that's someone different altogether, I've had isn't worse. it? worse. Yes. Yeah. And uh, uh, Dr. Reem Turkmani from uh, Building the Syrian State Movement, and Firas uh, Abi Ali. And to you in the audience, uh, Balkans on speed. Uh, uh, <laughs> someone speaking up for uh, one million people have left your country, and you're reminding us you're from this country, and you're still here listening to all of us going on. And uh, Medicine Sans Frontier, all the work you're doing, you're giving us a briefing as well. And as I mentioned at the beginning, one year after the journalists who were trying to cover it, many of whom were friends of this club, died in a shell burst in Homs, saying, please keep talking, please keep coming. So on behalf of uh, all of us in the room, thank you, panel, and thank you to you in the audience. Thank you very much. <laughs>